It's like your lack of success is from your laziness, point blank period. You're not that important. If something is for me, then it's for me and I will be claiming it. If you call me superwoman, then sit back and reflect and think about what more could you do for me? Cause that means I'm doing too much. Girl, I might've been a lot of things, but ugly, never that. I, you don't like me? Okay, I like me, sorry. Oh, I forgot to put in earrings. One second. I haven't filmed a sit down video in literally 32 years. So honestly, I don't know if, I don't know, I'm feeling a little insecure. I'm like, do I like the background? Do I like the lighting? Me being an old school YouTuber, like I just feel like I need a candle lit in the back. I don't know why I'm just programmed to think a video needs a candle in the back, but I think we're good. Like if I was to put a candle, I need to put one on each side or else it's gonna be uneven, you know? If you guys are wondering which candle this is, by the way, this is Forever Mood State of Pine. Shout out to Jackie Ina. I'm gonna be talking a lot in this video, so you know I need a little beverage. I'm drinking the Poppy Strawberry Lemon. Let's crack this open. Should I shake it before? I always do like a little like side to side thing. Y'all, I can't open it, hold on. Am I ever gonna start this video? I don't think so. What's up you guys, welcome back and welcome. If you're new, if this is the first video you guys have ever clicked on lately, I've just been doing vlogs. I don't really do too many sit down videos, but if you guys like sit down videos, let me know. Comment down below, cause in my head you guys just like vlogs. So that's pretty much all I do. So if you guys like this whole sit down chit chat style, please let me know down below so I can do more of that for you and make sure you guys give this video a big thumbs up. Honestly, whether people wanna see this video or not, this video really is for myself. As you guys can tell by the title, this video is 25 things I've learned at 25. So if you guys didn't know, I've been on YouTube since I was literally in eighth grade. Since I was 14 years old, I've been making YouTube videos and my YouTube channel really is my virtual diary. I love just watching old vlogs with my friends and my family and we just like, die laughing it's so beautiful that i have literally an online diary of my life and this is something i really wanted for myself i feel like 25 was just a huge pivotal year for me well i'm, I'm turning 25 now but i just i feel really different and like i mentioned in my previous video when you're 25 apparently like your brain is now fully developed and things just start to click i just have a lot more clarity you just see things differently and I just, I just feel very different. Like I feel like a different person. So I just wanted to make this video just to reflect on. And I wrote down 25 things that I've learned throughout this past year and really just like the past 25 years of my life. I feel like I've been through a lot. So again, if you guys are new here, I just turned 25 on December 7th. This age range, like our 20s, our mid 20s, it just looks so different for everybody and we're all really just going along our own life paths. So some of us are married with kids already. Some of us are still in school. Some of us have just graduated. Some of us are in medical school or law school. Some of us are just trying to figure it out. Some of us, you know, are still living in our parents' house or we're living on our own or we're traveling the world. Like everybody's really doing their own thing at this age. And with the emergence of social media, I love that we can see into everybody's life and just kind of see how everybody's living. I just don't want anybody to watch this video and compare themselves to me. Um, I get a lot of comments like that, like Nas is, already has three kids and she's married and she has a home. Please do not compare yourself to me or anybody else for that matter. That is the beauty of life. We're all living our own paths. We're all writing our own stories. So anyways, enough with me talking. I'm just gonna get started. I jotted these down on my flight home the other day, so. I feel like I got some good ones. I'm gonna try not to talk too much. I'm saying that now, but this video is probably gonna be like an hour long, but let's just get right into it. Number one, true luxury is not items. So I think for a lot of us, when we think of wealth, when we think of money, we just think of stuff. We think of designer bags, the nicest car, a big, beautiful house. As I mentioned before, I've been doing this job since I was literally 14 years old. So I kind of think of it as if I was working in a company for 11 years, the growth I would have had in that company. For the most part, you might be in a high up position at this point. So that's kind of how I can relate where I am in my career. So I do feel like I really elevated in my career in the past two years. And in my head, I'm like, okay, so I have more money now, like let me buy more things. And now that I'm older, I'm realizing that true luxury, true wealth is not those material items. It is having good health, it is, I know all this stuff sounds so corny, but I really saw with my own two eyes, especially with going through two pregnancy, the twin pregnancy, my twin pregnancy, my C-section, 
really changed my life. It just made me view life so different. What's the opposite of touch untouchable? Like I've never felt so touchable. Is that the right way to say it? Um, I've never felt so vulnerable in my life. I just kind of always view myself like I've always been a very headstrong person and I've always had a lot of confidence. So life doesn't really scare me. But when I was giving birth to my twins and going through that C-section, like that was the first time I really felt like fear for my life. And that just made me realize like, there's so much more to life than just having the nicest bags, the nicest car. It's about having enough time to enjoy yourself with your family. Cause if you're just working, working, working all the time to fund your life, it's like, are you even enjoying your life? Like you're not. And I feel like that really happened to me this past year. I really prioritized work and that's something I wanna work on in this next upcoming year. And I wanna make a video on that too, like my 2024 goals. And I think I'm at the point now where it's time to delegate tasks. I'm not having to worry about where money's gonna come from to, you know, put food on the table or to heat your home in the winter. Like those are all the things that are true. That is true wealth, that is true luxury, not these material things. And for me, the idea of losing my material things, don't get me wrong, I'm gonna still buy my little material things here and there. I just have a lot of fear investing my money in things that can be stolen from me. I can lose those things. I don't like that. So I'm ready to spend my money on things that matter, like taking my family on trips, taking them on vacations, experiences, because no one can take experiences from me. Someone can steal my Louis Vuitton bag. Somebody can steal my wedding ring, but nobody can take those life experiences away from me. I mentioned this in a previous video, but again, the, the brain clicked. I'm finally a lot more aware of my spending. And I'm just at this point now where I want to know where every dollar goes. And that's not to say I'm being stingy, but I just want to, I want to make sure like I work hard for my money and I want that money to go to things that really matter. And for me, that is experiences for my family, experiences for my children, and just, enriching our lives okay number two get it done the night before it's so crazy how little steps the night before can really just streamline your next day i'm talking having your water bottle filled up for your workout like having that filled up and ready for you in the fridge in the morning i'm talking having your workout clothes ready for you the night before for me like with filming and content making sure my camera is charged the night before, making sure my tripod and my light are ready to go in the place that I wanna film it. There's just so many examples I can give, but just, just get it done the night before. If it's a quick email they can just respond to in two seconds, just get it done. Number three, get dressed every day. And I'm not saying getting dressed to the nines. Like I'm I'm a very casual person. Like I like my loungewear, but like just having elevated loungewear, getting rid of all of your old dingy sweatpants and like your big t-shirts, like it's time to it's time to retire those. See, I grew up with a family that would stay in pajamas all day. If we weren't leaving the house, like we were in our pajamas. And it wasn't until I married Mel and Mel was like, my family's a type, like you get up in the morning, like you put on clothes. Like it doesn't have to be again, like you're going out clothes, but like you would change out of your pajamas into your loungewear. That just really is a game changer. And for me, even just wearing like leggings or even when I'm wearing now, this is like a little full body jumpsuit. It really does just make you feel so much better. And then I have like my go-to little makeup routine that I do that's not even makeup because I don't like wearing makeup every day. I'm talking just like gelling my eyebrows, curling my eyelashes, even just throwing in some little dainty earrings. Like you just feel so much more put together. And when you feel put together, you're more productive. And not only that, let's say just last minute things come up. Like your friend last minute texts you like, hey girl, I wanna go grab some coffee. Like you're ready to go. I just love that I'm like ready to go. You know what I mean? If we just last minute want to go out to brunch or we want to go take the kids somewhere. Like it's not like, oh, give me like two hours to get ready. Like I'm already pretty much ready. Just let me throw on some shoes, grab my bag and we can go. Number four, I promise you all of these aren't like looks and beauty related, but this one is a good blowout. will set the tone for the day. For me, hair over makeup no matter what my hair if my hair looks good that's one thing that comes into stepping into womanhood is you have your go-to things like think of your mom think of your grandma i'm sure they have like a signature scent or they had like a signature hair that they would always do or you know that's when you create your own style and i think that's so beautiful like the essence of a woman it's like she has her look, her style, her fragrance. So I feel like at 25, like I have it on lock. I have the hair that I know I like to do. I have my makeup products that I know will look good. I have like my go-to few outfits. I have like my basics in my closet. And with that really does come with like a sense of confidence. And I look back at pictures when I was in like my twi like early 20s or even my late teens. It's like, I was kind of all over the place. And now I'm like, okay, I know what I like and I'm gonna stick to it. Number five, procrastination is the enemy. 
So I've always had a problem with procrastination growing up. Don't get me wrong, I always got it done, but I would wait till like the night before, you know? I would say this past year, I have gotten really good at just getting it done. After I became a mother of three, I really cannot afford to procrastinate anymore. Like I just can't. The consequences are a lot more severe. It's, if I miss a deadline, like, sucks. Like, you know, you're not in school anymore. You don't have your parents, you know, supporting you anymore. Like if you mess up, like that consequence is going to affect you and your family. If you miss a deadline, if you miss a bill payment, okay, well, you got to pay the interest now. Um, you miss turning something in, okay, like you lost that opportunity. So again, for me becoming a mom of three, it got me to wake up earlier. It made me a lot more productive. That is one beautiful thing that came out of motherhood for me. And I really feel like, I mean, maybe as I've gone older, I would have just naturally become a more productive person. But I will say my kids really do inspire me a lot. My kids motivate me a lot. Um, I know whatever I achieve, like that's just gonna elevate my children's life. Procrastination, y'all, you, you gotta let it go. Like, let it go. Let that be left in 2023 because you are getting in the way of your own success. Let me tell you that. That's something I had to come to terms with. It's like your lack of success is from your laziness point blank period you're not going to tell yourself that i'll tell you that so finally i'm just happy i like finally let that go in my life like i wake up in the morning i get my workout in no more excuses quick little break because i would watch videos like this when i was like four months postpartum and then try to like implement it in my life if you have babies if you have kids like under the age of like one or even let's say two okay give yourself some grace I was literally like two months postpartum watching motivational videos and I'm like, oh my God, why am I not getting up in the morning and doing this? Like, girl, you ha you just had babies. Like your body is not even fully like put together yet. Like give yourself some grace. There's a lot more life events that could happen other than, you know, postpartum and giving birth. That applies to you then obviously this is not directed towards you. For those of you who are watching this who know you could be doing more, you could be doing better. It's really just you versus you. Hopefully this video motivates you. Just let that procrastination go in 2023 like let it go when i tell you my mindset shift like something just clicked and i'm ready to like take over the world no no i'm just being dramatic but like i'm ready like i'm not making excuses anymore if something is for me then it's for me and i will be claiming it thank you very much okay number six outsourcing so i grew up with a very much you guys know i grew up with an immigrant family it's very much like we can do it why pay other people like Again, my dad, he's the handyman, He's he fixes the roof, he changes the lights, like he does everything. So I grew up just kind of like seeing that and I was just very stingy with outsourcing. And I'm the like number one person to preach to all of my friends, especially in this industry. I'm like outsource, 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 you know? So let me tell you one thing I've learned with, I don't wanna say with like unlocking this next level of wealth, but I have been around a lot more rich people, wealthy people. Wealthy people, their time is extremely valuable. So for them, they don't think like, oh, like I could do this myself. Like they don't think that. An hour of their time is worth like six figures. So for them, they're like, I'm not about to spend an hour doing something that I could pay someone else to do for like a hundred bucks because I could use that hour to make like double, triple that. And this is not just for the uber wealthy people. I'm talking like even an hour, like think about how much your salary at your job, how much you make an hour. If you could pay someone literally like 20 bucks to do something in the same hour, that's something that I've been implementing in my life. That's a big reason why I'm thinking about hiring an assistant for 2024, because again, I want to enjoy my life. And again, you guys don't see everything. And I know a lot of people could just look from the outside looking in like, Girl, it looks like all you do is just do your makeup and like go to events. Honestly, since 2020, I've been hustling a lot and I think I'm ready. I don't wanna like step back per se, but I'm just ready to outsource. Like I still wanna keep pushing out the content that I do, but even then, like even in my head, I'm like, I'm pushing out all this content, but I'm still not pushing out enough. And that's what's hard about this day and age with social media. Like I think I neglect my TikTok a lot. Um, like I could be doing more and that's something that I just, I need help. I need help. I'm ready to say I need help. I'm ready to outsource and I'm ready to have a good life balance. Like I want time to work out. I want time to spend time with my kids and my family. Um, I want to start traveling this year. It's time. It's time to make moves, you know? Okay, so quick little side note. I just got the aura ring for myself for Christmas and this was truly so eye-opening. So it tracks your heart rate and this is how much I'm stressed 
throughout the day. So you guys can see one day I was stressed for literally six hours and 15 minutes of the day, the other one nine hours of the day. This is not normal. Like this should not be okay. I'm 25 years old. If I keep going like this, like I'm gonna have a full head of gray hair and be a shriveled up old hag by the time I'm 32. Okay, I'm being dramatic, but no, for real. Like it's interesting because acne and weight gain, the biggest cause of those two is stress. And this really opened my eyes. I'm a very analytical person. So again, I knew I was stressed out, but to see that I'm stressed out for a majority of the day, I definitely need to change that. I had two days off with the new year and it's just so interesting to see. Like for example, on the left, this was the first time I really just sat on the couch and just watched Netflix. I never just like sit and watch TV. I just feel like that's a waste of time, but my body needs it. I need that restorative time. On the right side, I got a massage at around 7.30 p.m. So it's so crazy to see like my body actually felt calm and restored during that time. So I just need to prioritize rest. And again, this really was eye-opening. And now I don't view that stuff as a waste of time. Like it's really essential for my health. That whole superwoman mentality, let it go. I told Mel that. We got into a fight and I told them because he would tell me like he would call me superwoman. I'm like, if you... Call me superwoman, then sit back and reflect and think about what more could you do for me? Because that means I'm doing too much. Don't call me superwoman. That is not a compliment. I don't want to be superwoman. I don't want to be like, oh my gosh, she does it all. No, mm -mm. I'm ready to, I'm ready to live a softer life. I'm not saying soft life. I'm ready to live a softer life. And let me tell you, Mel has not called me superwoman since, okay? I'm like, if I look like superwoman, that means you need to get in here and like do something. But quick side note, you guys know Mel is an amazing father, an amazing husband. Like he, he does a lot. So I don't want you guys to think like Mel doesn't do anything, but I can just tend to do more than I need to do. So that's why I'm like, I'm stepping back from that. I'm not taking on tasks. Like I'm saying no, like this is my year of saying no. I'm in my villain era. Like villain era is activated, okay? I don't care for people to like me anymore. I'm a big people pleaser. I know that I'm done. I, you don't like me? Okay, I like me, sorry. Number seven, things are never as bad as they seem. So I just think back to some things that just seem like really big deals in my life. Looking back on it, I'm like, it really was not that deep. At the end of the day, guys, we're literally in this floating rock in the middle of space. You're not that important. I think it just makes me feel better to know like I'm not that important. Like everybody is the, the main character of their own life. Some things might feel like literally the end of the world and then six months pass and you're like, I literally forgot that that even happened. Number eight, life is in seasons. I actually wrote a few sentences for this one. You feel this way this season and life changes rapidly. The good and the bad, it's all temporary. Like I mentioned the past three years, I had three kids. I experienced two pregnancies, you know, childbirth, um, a pandemic, COVID, just life just got like really, really dark. And I was just like in a dark place and whether it's like hormonal or whatever, um, what really got me through is just knowing like it's a season. I'm using having a baby as an example because that's one thing I can relate to. But let's say you're like this deep into being a first time parent and you know, like you're not sleeping, you're getting like two hours of sleep a day. It's a season. It will come and it will go. And I swear like you'll completely, I don't want to say you'll forget about it. But like, for example, now that I'm finally in a place where like my kids are all sleeping through the night. Um, like life is really on routine now. Like there's nothing unexpected anymore. Like my kids sleep through the night. Like we're all getting our sleep. And guys, sleep really is so, so important. So just the fact that we're all getting our sleep and I can actually go work out every morning and be consistent, it really does just change your life. Just looking back at the times where I felt like I would never be able to do that anymore and like to be able to do it again. And I know like as my kids get older, it's gonna even feel like that times 100. Like you can start doing things again. So whether that's maybe you're going through a period of time where like you're trying to save a bunch of money so you're not doing like any extra things. Maybe you're not like doing beauty treatments right now just to like save some coin, like whatever the case may be. Again, it is a season, it will come, it will pass. And there's beautiful things at the end of that journey. Not us being on only number nine. I gotta, I gotta speed through these, okay. Number nine, the reason you aren't successful is because you haven't made this step. I pretty much like touched on this earlier in this video, but we really are our biggest critic, our biggest enemy. And a lot of the times, the difference between you and that other person, like let's say, let's talk about like your favorite social media influencer and you're looking at their content and you're like, oh, I wish that was me. The difference between you and that person, nine times out of 10, is that they actually made the content. Like that really is 
it. And the thing is you can't compare somebody's chapter 225 to your chapter one. Maybe this is the first video you've ever seen of mine. There's a million followers on YouTube, on Instagram. She's so lucky, but it's like, you don't know that I've literally been doing this since I was 13, 14. You can sit here and keep comparing yourself and making excuses for yourself and saying like, oh, it's unfair. Like that person is just lucky. They have luck. And I can be that person too. I can be like, they're just lucky. But is it really luck? or did they just put the work in? Wait, wait, I actually wrote down a quote. I'm always writing down quotes that I like if I see it in a video or something. The master has failed more times than the beginner who has never tried. Just keep that in your head and that should light some fire under you, okay? I've struggled with acne my entire life. And when I started my YouTube channel, I was pizza face, okay? I was 13 years old, I had so much acne. And I made it like about my acne. Acne is actually how I got into makeup. So if it wasn't for acne, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. But imagine if I was like, oh, I have bad skin. Like, I'm not gonna film. Like, can you imagine that? And who knows, maybe I would have started now later on in my adulthood, but that could have completely changed the trajectory, tra trajectory, I can't even speak, of my career. Like, maybe things could have been completely different. And I love that I have followers that I've literally been with me from the very beginning. Like, I meet some of you guys, and you're like, I remember you with your pink bedroom and your zebra bedspread. And we all pretty much grew up together, especially because I would make videos related to where I was in life. So, you know, like high school themed videos, prom, get ready with me for prom. And I think it's really beautiful that a lot of us have grown up together, and I'm really thankful for that. My next one is related to what I just said, but it's another quote. Extraordinary results are often just the product of ordinary actions done diligently and persistently over an extended period of time. You can't just dream, you have to put in the work. See someone who has like a million followers, two million followers. A lot of times like they've been doing the same exact thing. It's not like they did anything crazy. Like they just did this same exact thing and they showed up and they stayed consistent. Consistency is key with anything in life. No matter what you're trying to do, showing up every day hits way different than just having a one-off like think about it as like a singer like think about having just like a one-hit wonder versus having longevity in your career i personally would pick the longevity okay maybe not every one of my songs pop off but i would so much rather that than just being like a one-hit wonder and then everybody forgets about me you know stay humble life can change quick never say never and never say that can't be you so i think that's one thing with being younger we're very we're just like a lot more judgmental and you know we'd be like oh, that'd never be me let me tell you Throughout the course of my life, I've learned that it can very much well be you. Just stay humble and don't judge other people and don't judge people until you've spent a day in their shoes, you know? Because again, that'd be very easy for me to look at someone and be like, I would never do that and like turn my nose up to it. Like, girl, let me tell you, I never thought I would get pregnant. And I'd be like, that'd never be me until I looked at the pregnancy test and had two little blue lines. So yeah, never say never. Budget and save. Just because you have money doesn't mean you need to spend it. I feel like I've already touched on that, so I'm not gonna get deep into it. This one has been me my entire life, but I feel like it's really solidified now at 25. Like I've always been a very confident person, you guys. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the way I was raised. Maybe it's my chart, massage sun, Leo moon. So I'm just a big like fireball of energy. If you worry too much about other people's opinions about yourself, you're doing nothing but holding yourself back in life. For example, when I was in high school, that's like when YouTube started to become more popular. So more people wanted to do it. And a big reason why people wouldn't do it was because they were scared of getting judged by their classmates. And now me at 25, like, do you know how many people I still talk to from high school or keep up with? Like four, four girls, that's it. Those are it. Like, who cares what other people think, y'all? You're doing nothing but blocking your own blessing. Another quote that I love, Yasmin always says it, a lion never loses sleep over the opinions of a sheep. Who cares what other people think? Because let me tell you, those people who are probably making fun of me behind my back, because y'all, people were scared. I don't want to say they were scared of me, but like no one's ever said nothing to my face. Let me tell you that. Half of them are trying to start a social media page now. So... You gotta just do what you wanna do, y'all. If there's other reasons you don't wanna do something, then cool. But don't be scared to fail. Literally, don't be scared to fail. Like I said, the master has failed more times than the beginner. Let me tell y'all something. We're all, everybody watching this video, we're gonna end up in one place, okay? In the ground, in the dirt, okay? So enjoy your life while you're alive. If you think about it, life is so short. Like, I'm a quarter of a century old. Like, what? That is just crazy to me, like, okay, the next, time, the next time 25 years goes by, I'm gonna be 50. Like, 
Life goes by very fast, you guys. You gotta enjoy it, okay? If you're not gonna enjoy life, then what's the point of being on this earth? Next one, networking is one of the most beneficial aspects of my life. Life experiences and connections are more valuable than money. Your network is your net worth. I wanted to add this because I do have a lot of friends with that mentality. Like if I'm not getting paid, I'm not showing up somewhere. And I'm very much somebody, I, you guys see, I go to the events, I show face. And let me tell you, networking, the friendships I've made, and I don't even wanna say friendships, cause yeah, I made some friendships out of it, but some people are just straight up just like acquaintances, they're work colleagues. And I think that's where the lines kind of blur in this industry is because we're all like social media influencers, like we're all kind of expected to be friends, but think about the workplace. Think about like your work office. Are you guys all besties? Like, no, you guys are coworkers, your acquaintances, your colleagues. So that's kind of how I view my career as well. Like, okay, this person might not be my bestie, but that doesn't make them fake. That doesn't make them like LA is fake. Like is LA fake? or are you just expecting too much from people? We can go out, you know, we can chit chat, have a good time, but you don't have to be my bestie. But if you need something, if you wanna hit me up about something, you got a question about what camera I'm using, about the lighting I'm using, I will, I will tell you. I don't understand the people that are gatekeepers, especially in this industry. Like, how are you gonna be a social media influencer and a gatekeeper? Like, our whole job is to influence people. And people are like, I don't want them to know what I'm using. I'm not gonna go out of my way to do it, but if they need my help, like, I'll be there to help them. And maybe they might not give that to me in return, but that's fine because I believe in karma. I believe in energy. And that's the energy I'm putting out. The universe, God will bless me in some other way. You know, it might not be from that person directly, but it might be from, you know, this other blessing coming my way or working with my dream brand or this dream trip. Like, you know, there's so many ways that the world blesses you and it doesn't have to be from that one person. So don't let other people change your heart. Should I make that another one? Don't give other people the power to change your heart. Don't give them that power. Don't give them that energy. Okay, they're not worth that. They're not strong enough for that. My next one, eat more home cooked meals. Okay, your parents were right. My entire life, my parents hated going to restaurants, even though they were restaurant owners, but they wouldn't really like going to restaurants, especially now, dude. Like the quality of restaurants have gone down hill so much but let me tell you as people who are from the restaurant industry for example like the case of chicken breast from restaurant depot that they would buy for the restaurant was like 60 bucks now that same case of chicken is like 300 dollars. so times are tough prices are going up inflation is going up so obviously restaurants have to cut costs whether that's you know getting lower quality ingredients using lower quality oils whatever the case may be see i'm going off on a tangent it's just so much better for your health like money aside it's just so much better for your health these restaurants don't care about your weight loss goals and your macros and about what breaks you out and what doesn't like they don't care about that stuff they want their food to taste delicious so you can come back and spend your money there so with that when i have that mentality i'm like okay like i can cook this at home use less salt use avocado oil use less oil use less sugar and it's just way better for my well-being i believe we're on number 15 i actually got this one from the wizard liz i love her videos like i want to be her bestie what you watch or listen to is your reality and this is something that just naturally happened for me i was a huge true crime junkie i would always listen to like little true crime videos and podcasts while i was like cleaning the house i'll be like walking going on a neighborhood walk like by myself at night like listening to true crime when i got pregnant with the twins just naturally i just didn't care to listen to that stuff anymore it just made me feel really unsettled it really opened my eyes that i think a lot of us are just so desensitized and we're sitting here getting kind of entertainment off of something so terrible that happened to somebody like that's somebody's family member that's somebody's child that's somebody's father mother whatever and we're sitting here like hearing about them getting gruesomely murdered on our afternoon stroll like it just started to make me feel really uncomfortable really unsettled i remember listening to one true crime that like really just like ugh, just gave me such chills it just really hit home for me again i was pregnant and it was about a woman being home alone while she was pregnant and you know something horrible happened to her and again because I guess because I related to it so much, like it just really made me feel unsettled. Guys, I don't even really listen to music all like that. And whenever I tell people that, they think I'm crazy, but I'm, I'm not a big music person. Don't get me wrong. I still like music. Like if I'm in the car, like if someone got their music playing, but I personally, I just, I don't turn on music myself. Like I don't even have my own Spotify. Like if we're listening to music in the car, Mel is handling, Mel's handling the ox. But I love just listening to videos that motivate me, that inspire me, that teach me something. And I also love listening to audiobooks and podcasts. You are who you surround yourself with. Now this is something we literally hear from birth, but it's just become a lot more prevalent in my life. And I actually talked about it in my caption that I posted. So the day before my birthday, I went out with all my girlfriends, like all my closest girlfriends. And I just, 
felt so blessed lately i've really been reflecting on my friendships and i just knock on wood y'all i think I've, i'm just a really lucky person my two closest friends are my friends from literally like middle school like we've been friends for over a decade and then i have like my close friends here that i met in la I want to say this but I don't want to offend people because if you're someone who feels like you don't have good friendships I don't want you to feel like it's your fault but I feel like when you're good energy and you have good intentions you attract that in your life so looking at all my friends I was like I have some really dope friends they're just again like amazing like and I think that's my next thing that I have um on here it says you have to have i saw this on a tiktok and i loved it i thought it was so cute you have to have women in your life that are cooler than you and when i saw this again i was thinking about my friendships and i'm like wow i'm so blessed to say that i have that like my friends are so freaking cool and another thing about it is you every one of your friends should have a trait that you would want or one thing about them that like really inspires you let me give some examples as if i'm not talking enough in this video but like paula for example she is so like easygoing go with the flow again knock on wood like the craziest thing will happen to her and the way she just brushes it off for example last time i was in ohio okay she was a few like she was like an hour late coming over and she's like yeah guys my car just broke down and then my phone died so i had no way to like call anybody to come like you know pick me up but it's okay i'm here and then she like pulls out a bottle of wine i'm like the way I would have been like, I'm done for the rest of the week. Like, I'm done. Like, I'm going home. Knock on wood. Again, Paulina in La Cocina, that's my girl. I love her. And then, for example, Isha. Okay, like, since we were 12 years old, since we were 12, Isha has said she wanted to be a doctor. For over a decade, got a full ride to college. Got a full ride to medical school. Yeah, I don't want to jinx my friends. Knock on every wood. Oh, I'm dropping my phone. Knock on every wood. Knock on everyone in this house. This girl, like, again, so hardworking. And these are just examples. I can sit here and talk about every single one of my girlfriends and give a million examples. But all my friends, cool, dope girls. I know some people aren't like that, but I love, like, mingling my friend groups. Like, I loved introducing Paul and Isha to my friends out here in LA, like, to Kayla and Danny. Like, I, I love that. Like, I love that we can all be friends and all just be, like, one big happy family. Again, you're as successful as the people you surround yourself with. So I love showing them off. I'm like, look at my cool friends making life happen for themselves like i love it i applaud them for it and i'm so thankful for the friendships i have y'all i love this one i love this one i remember when i heard this i was like oh that's so good let me write it down in my notes the people who like to walk will walk farther further will walk further the people who like to walk will walk further than the people who just like the destination enjoy the journey when i saw that i was like oh my god that is so good for example you guys hear me say this all the time i love my job i love what i do i love being a content creator i love talking to you guys people might look at me and not think i'm that successful you know i don't have 10 million followers i'm not a brand owner yet some people might be like oh she's not that successful in their eyes that's fine but in my eyes like i am a child of an immigrant family who literally my we all stayed in a one bedroom apartment like when we first came here i watched my parents open up a little mom and pop restaurant and they would work in that restaurant from sun up to sundown and i would sit my butt in that restaurant whenever i go to mom and pop shops and i see like the little kids working you know there's always that like one table that the kids are at and they're like on their little computer or like coloring like that was me so for me to see how much my life has elevated and the fact that i can like give back and live comfortably and be able to retire my parents like to me i've reached the ultimate success i don't need other people to look at me and be like oh compare me to this on a third because in my eyes i have reached success and i could honestly knock on wood die happy like i am i'm very proud of myself and i i'll give myself the flowers that i believe i deserve and i truly think it's because i truly love what i do i love what i do so I just feel fulfilled no matter what whether this video gets two views or a million views i feel fulfilled i basically said this one earlier but my next one is to forgive yourself self-forgiveness and giving yourself grace is one of the most important things you can do in life like you are human you are human again i'm talking to myself too give yourself room for error let yourself fail let yourself fail because you're only going to come out stronger you're going to learn from it y'all i'm so mad at myself because i literally listed off 25 things but i say some of them like earlier because i go off in tangents my next one is we're all going to die one day so enjoy your life i literally said that earlier okay next one other opinions 
are projections and reflections of their own insecurities. And especially with me being in the public eye, I guess I would say, the hate used to be really bad. I don't know what it is. I don't know if people are nicer. I don't know if it's because I'm a mom now and I'm older, but I guess like I was young. I was like 16, 16, 17, and I was looking more grown for my age and acting more grown. So it did come with a lot of hate, but just know like a lot of people, like their opinions about you is a projection of themselves. So they might look at you and be like, oh, she's this, she's that. And that's because deep down, that's how they feel about themselves. It's just natural because as humans, we notice the things that we're insecure about in other people. I notice acne in everybody. Like I notice, and not to say that in a bad way. Like I, I look at everybody's skin. Like I'm so obsessive over their skin because I know I've gone through my skin issues. And that's how a lot of people are like mentally as well they might see like you posted a picture of you happy let's say your man bought you like a new bag or you're on this trip and someone like i see that with a lot of pretty girls like they'll be on a trip to dubai and somebody will comment like i wonder who's sponsoring that trip as in like they're there with like like a man is paying for their trip it's like you know what maybe she worked hard and she paid for that trip herself like you know people are just such haters like they see they'll see a photo especially with social media like nuance has been so erased lately like it's just people will just look at a photo and feel like they know everything like social media can be very toxic in that sense it has a lot of pros but it has a lot of cons as well so you have to be mentally strong so these little opinions don't block your blessings this one right here is at me specifically and it kind of has to do with the last one i just said you have always been naturally pretty i have a lot of work done and i'm very open about it you know i have my rhinoplasty i have my body done i have like fillers whatever but the way people will talk about me is like i was this ugly little ferret when i was younger this is what i look like at 16 but even me at 16 like let's say there was like an unflattering photo of me like people would hold on to that photo and send it to me or post it on these like pages and be like this is what she really looks like she's shaped like a like a refrigerator so it started to make me feel like insecure about my body i don't want to say like i got my body done for other people and i don't regret getting my body done like girl i might have been a lot of things but ugly never that okay so don't let these little opinions get to you okay like people are just so ugly on the inside and unfortunately there's no surgery for that like that you just gotta kind of fix yourself i believe this is my last one if it's not i don't even care anymore i've been talking so much i'm just ready to end this video but i'm gonna i'm gonna end it with a bang okay don't blame others for not setting your own boundaries now like i said i'm a big workaholic and i have been the past three years and i would sit here and kind of get like upset like oh my god like they're blaming other people like my my schedule my plate da, da, da. but it's like you are in control of that like i could have stood up for myself and stood up to myself and been like you cannot take on this other project your week is already full but no i would sacrifice i would not do my workout i would not spend time with my family so i can get this project done to get this work done and i'm done I'm done with that. Like I, I need to enjoy my life, but I'm all about like hustling. Um, and that's kind of how I view like the past three years of my life. Like these are my hustle years. I'm going to set myself up. And I feel like I'm at that point. Like I said, at the beginning of the video, I feel like this video kind of went into like a full circle, but where, you know, I've been saving, I've been working hard and I'm ready for the next step. I'm ready to elevate my life. You guys know, ultimately I want to be a brand owner. That is my goal. And, you know, I used to not want to talk about these things because if I if it never happened or if I failed, I don't want you guys to be like, oh, I'll get Nas and her failed like business. But you know what? I have no problem failing because like I said, if I do fail, I'll only come out stronger and you guys can learn from my mistakes. I love, you know, sharing my life with you guys. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why I was able to have such success in my career is because I am an open book and I do, you know, share all these aspects of my life with you guys. And if I have a failed business, then y'all are gonna watch this business fail with me, okay? And we're in this together. So I, I'm i really trying to work towards that. My goal is 2025, 2026. I'm not even trying to throw shade, but I think a lot of influencers just feel like as an influencer, like they should be a brand owner, but that's not the case. Like not everybody is meant to be a brand owner and you can see that with their products, with what they're putting out. I don't wanna be that. I want longevity with my brand. I want it to really embody who I am as a person and I want it to be for you guys. Like I want you guys to love what I put out and with that, it will take time. Let me know if you guys want me to do more sit down videos. This was really fun. I feel like I haven't just sat down and talked to you guys in a minute. So this was really fun. I love you guys so much and I'll see you again for my next video. Bye guys.